how we jump straight into breakfast. So I am making some mini tofu patties. I was inspired. I don't know what I was inspired by, but I was inspired. So I first try to crumble the tofu with a fork and I quickly realized that my hands are better. So I'm using my hands to crumble up the tofu. The second thing we're gonna use are some carrots. So I'm using two medium-sized carrots. We're gonna peel, and then we're gonna try to dice these carrots as, uh, as finely as possible. Basically, very, very small pieces of carrots. Now, if you don't wanna chop the carrots with your hands, you can actually stick the carrots in a food processor, and that should do the trick in terms of basically getting them into tiny, tiny pieces. If you do want to try this by hand, all I did was my usual julienne method, okay? I don't know if I say this right, julienne, julienne, I don't know, okay? So I basically slice the carrots thinly in a slight angle, and then you want to slice those pieces thinly, and then you want to turn it around and then slice thinly as well, so you're getting these tiny little cute pieces of carrots. And then we're gonna add that into the tofu mixture. And to season, I'm actually taking two tablespoons of my scrambled tofu seasoning. If you guys need the recipe for this, I will leave a link down below with the recipe. For those of you that don't know what it is, it's basically a mixture of different spices that I like to use for scrambled tofu. I find that one of the difficult things about making scrambled tofu is taking out like 15 different types of spices every time you wanna make scrambled tofu. And for someone that has a messy pantry, this is not fun. So instead, what you wanna do is just make a seasoning in bulk, and then anytime you wanna make scrambled tofu, just take out that one jar, and then it's so easy to make scrambled tofu. And then into our little concoction, we're gonna add some applesauce, which is gonna act as a bit of a binder. So you wanna mix this well, but then I realized that the bowl I was using was just not big enough. So I'm just transferring the contents into a bigger bowl. And then we're just gonna mix everything. And I'm just taking my hands this time. And then to really bind everything, I'm going to add some flour. Now I'm using white rice flour just because I have some and I don't really know what else to do with it, but I'm sure you could use just regular flour or oat flour or whatever flour you want to use. In total, I ended up adding in six tablespoons of the white rice flour, but I would add a little bit of flour at a time and mixing things so that you could kind of see when the mixture starts to come together. So depending on the type of flour you use, this might be different. And then into this mixture, I'm also gonna add in some chopped green onion. And of course, we're just adding in the rest of the flour. Once again, the total amount I used was six tablespoons, but use however much depending on the consistency that you're looking for and the flour that you're using. And once you have the mixture kind of firm enough for you to be able to form little patties with them, you can start heating up that pan. And I'm gonna use a nonstick pan and I'm gonna basically cook this in two batches. So each batch I used half a tablespoon of oil and that was more than enough. And then we're just gonna start adding in the little patties. Aren't these so cute? I have the heat on about medium high heat. We're gonna cook everything for about two to three minutes on each side until it starts to kind of nicely brown and it should start to come together a little bit more with the heat as well. Now, if you wanted to keep these oil free, you could also bake these or air fry these. I'm sure it would work really well. I didn't try it, but I don't know. I just feel like it would work very well, okay? So feel free to do that if that's what you prefer. And these are super yummy guys because there's so many different types of spices in that scrambled tofu seasoning. It makes it really tasty and it's kind of like scrambled tofu, but like in a patty form. <laughs> and they're really convenient if you wanted to just add a little bit of extra protein into your meals. You could just stick in like two or three of these into whatever meal you're having. That's what I did anyways. I just kept these in a tightly sealed container in the fridge for a few days. And then anytime I had a nice meal and I wanted to add a little bit of protein I just added a few of these into the meal and it was perfect so let's have some breakfast so I'm having three of these patties along with two mini cucumbers that I chopped up 
Oh, and these patties go really well with a little bit of ketchup. Mm -hmm. So I just dip them in ketchup. And then with the cucumbers, I'm going to have some samjang, which is a Korean dipping sauce. This is like a Korean spicy dipping sauce, which is really delicious. And I like to have it with vegetables. And my favorite way to eat the samjang is with cucumber. It's so, so good. Uh, you can find samjang in your Korean supermarket, or you can actually make your own. I'll leave a link to a recipe video that I did a while ago, which kind of shows Korean uh, sauce recipes. And then with my uh, tofu patties, I'm gonna have a little bit of rice. And my mom actually also made some rice porridge with pine nuts so it's like a pine nut rice porridge and um in korea we call it juk and it's so good i don't know it's like really good it's like really nice and nutty and savory it's you know very subtle flavors but i love it so much in korea there's a word for this it's called kosohe I don't know how to describe it. There is no direct translation, but basically it's something to describe like a nice and savory and very comforting taste. I'm also gonna have a little bit of radish kimchi, also known as kaktugi. This is my mom's kaktugi. It's so, so good. It's like one of my favorite kimchis. And I know I keep telling you guys, I'll get you guys the recipe. I will, okay, I will. Let me just, let me just talk to my mama. I don't know how to make it, okay? My uh, rice porridge got a little bit messy. It kind of like exploded in the microwave, <laughs> but it's okay, okay? There it is. I'm gonna add a little bit of green onion in there and it looks really plain and it kind of is, but it's like so good. I don't know what it is. And there you go. There's my kind of very Korean style breakfast. Super good, so satisfying. This is my kind of breakfast. And after tea, I am after tea. No, we're making tea. After breakfast, I'm making tea. Jesus, sorry guys, my uh, voiceover. You guys know how it is. I'm making some matcha tea because I have matcha powder. So by making matcha tea, I mean just adding some matcha powder into a cup and then adding some hot water and then just mixing it. I know this isn't probably the most traditional way of making matcha tea, but who cares? Okay, who cares? Lunchtime, busy workday once again. We're gonna make a very convenient meal. I am once again using an Eve's product. I feel like I need to be sponsored by Eve's. I mean, come on guys. Anyways, I'm taking one of their burgers, uh, veggie burgers, and I'm just gonna cook it up. These little products are really handy to have on really busy days when I just need a quick meal. It's not something that I recommend eating every single day, but it's great for busy people. And next, I am actually going to make a bunch of veggies as well. I'm gonna make extra for dinner too. So I'm just taking some broccoli and some asparagus that has been sitting in my fridge for a long time. And then we're just gonna cook it all in one batch. And of course, for the broccoli guys, I use up all that broccoli, okay? Don't just eat the, you know, floret part, okay? Eat the whole thing. It's all good for you. When you cook it up, it's all gonna taste great. One of my tips for eating more veggies is to just prepare them all in bulk and just have it ready to eat and have it in the fridge. And then anytime you wanna eat some veggies, you can just take it out and eat it, making it more convenient for you to eat healthy. So I'm just cooking up the veggie burger on a nonstick pan. And then in the same pan, I'm just going to add the broccoli so that I can cook everything together. And then in another pan, we're gonna add the asparagus and cook up all of that asparagus. And onto my burger patty, once it's mostly cooked, I'm gonna add in a piece of vegan cheese. It's been sitting in my freezer, so I'm just gonna add that in there and then cover up the pan so I can basically melt that vegan cheese onto that patty. Now I never know if I'm cooking asparagus properly. I don't really know if there's like some specific way that I should be cooking asparagus. But what I do is I just cook it on a pan and then I also add in little bits of water at a time to kind of let it, you know, really cook thoroughly through. And I usually use this lemon and herbs uh, seasoning to season the asparagus. I think it tastes really good. And then I basically cook it until it's kind of like nicely charred slightly on the outside. So it's kind of browning a little bit on the outside. And um, yeah, I don't know, is that a proper way? Who knows? And I'm gonna season the broccoli with the same lemon and herbs seasoning as well. Now, I didn't have any burger buns, but I had this English muffin, which works fantastic as a burger bun, by the way. So I just toasted it, and then I'm gonna add some ketchup, Dijon mustard, 
a little bit of relish. And then let's just add our beautiful burger patty with the melted vegan cheese. Oh, the cheese I'm using is from a brand called Earth Island. I think it's the same as Follow Your Heart. I could be wrong, but I think it's the same company. There you go. There's my kind of like plain Jane looking cheeseburger slash English muffin burger. Anyway, let's also plate the veggies. So once again, I made all those veggies for lunch and dinner. So I'm just taking some of the veggies for lunch. And I also have some grape tomatoes as well. So I'm gonna add that onto the plate for some extra nutrients and this beautiful color. It adds such a nice color to the plate, does it not? And there you go, there is my lunch. It's semi-healthy, <laughs> lots of veggies, and also very delicious with this uh, delicious plant-based burger using an English muffin. And dinner time, I'm making a Buddha bowl of some sort. So I am taking some tofu that I already had chopped up in my container here in the fridge. And of course, I'm going to pan fry the tofu. What else is new, guys? So we're going to heat up a nonstick pan on medium high heat. And I'm not going to use any oil, but if you're not using a nonstick pan, then I would recommend adding a little bit of oil to cook your tofu. So I'm just cooking the tofu. I like to cook it for about three to five minutes on each side on medium high heat. That is my tip for you to make it nice and kind of browned on one side. And yeah. And on a pan, I'm just going to reheat the veggies from lunch. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even take it out of the pan. I just kept it there. It was sitting there, yep. So this is what the tofu will look like after you pan fried it for a few minutes on each side. I'm using medium firm tofu, so it's a little bit softer than extra firm. And if you wanna watch my tofu video to get more details on tofu, I'll link it down below. And let's assemble our lovely Buddha bowl, even though it's more of a Buddha plate. Yes, because my bowls were in the dishwasher. Okay, so we're just gonna take some brown rice and we're also gonna take some of that pan-fried tofu goodness. And I'm also gonna add in two of those tofu patties that we made in the morning. And let's of course add in our asparagus and broccoli as well. The beauty of these types of bowls and plates is that you can pretty much add whatever you'd like. I usually like to assemble it by adding in some sort of a grain, so like rice or noodles or something, and some sort of a protein and some sort of vegetables. And here I'm also adding some kimchi, which of course, if you guys need the vegan kimchi recipe from my mama, I'll link it down below. And then for the sauce, I'm using my trusty tahini dressing. Oh my God, I love this dressing. I use it all the time for any sort of Buddha bowl or bowls like this. And I'm sure I have a recipe for it. I'll link it down below. And there you go. There is my dinner. It's super nutritious. It's so, so good. It's so satisfying. I can't. I also added in some green onion on top as well. And for a little dessert, I'm having a little bit of orange juice. I like to sometimes have like a tiny sip of orange juice because I think it's just so refreshing. I don't like to have too much because I feel like it's like just... It's basically just a sugary drink, but it still tastes good and it's super refreshing to me. Mm -hmm. And for another piece of dessert, I'm having one of these little cheesecake uh, chocolate thingies. Originally, I made this recipe so that I could make cheesecake pops. So like little like popsicle thingies out of cheesecake and it's super cute, but I had some extra uh, in the batter. So I just like stuck the cheesecake filling in an ice cube tray and then I added some chocolate on top and it makes really, really convenient little snacks. So that's what I did. Recipe for the cheesecake pops coming soon. And there you have it, guys. There is a super simple what I ate in a day video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, I'm going to link my what I ate in a day playlist so you can watch all of my what I ate in a day videos. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.